Hi everyone, in this video, we are going to learn how an interesting research article I have gone through, a front to back guide to writing a qualitative research article. This article has been published in 2015 and uh, written by Ahir Gopal Das and Fordham University, New York, USA. Why I could found this article is very interesting. I think all the research scholars must go through this article. And I'm going to share this article link, downloaded article link in my description box also. So that article would be easily available to everyone. So basically, this article is uh, uh, because that is not a traditional kind of way how you have to write an article that is something is different like front to back guide to writing an academic and theoretical positions qualitative research in social sciences. And a paper draws on formal published advice from books and articles, as well as informal like word of mouth advice from senior scholars. So that is the uh, mixed approach over here that is guided by somebody. I mean, those have written in books and articles, as well as that is word of mouth advice also incorporated. And uh, when we talk about the findings, most qualitative research article can be divided into basically four major parts like front end, the methods, the findings and the back end. And that is the most interesting part of this article. So let me start discussing this particular article from where we are going to start. We can see here uh, this one is the article in the in the in the last section. I mean, in this section, we can see here the qualitative research article typically consists of four parts: the front end, the methods, the findings, and the back end. And the all four parts are important, but the front end is paramount because it's all it's not only establishes the phenomena. Relevant literature, theoretical problems, research questions, research motivation, and theoretical perspectives also, right? And empirical findings, theoretical contributions, and practical implica implications to come. And then we can see here is this, this, this particular author, he had recommended writing a rough draft of the front and at the outset, then refining it periodically as you advance other sections of the article. And the front end, when we talk about the front end, front end itself, it is divided into these parts, these four parts. We can see here uh, these parts front end. Number one is organization. The front end is sometimes written as one long section entitled introduction. And sometimes as a series of shorter section with generic titles such as theoretical background or domain specific titles such as prior research on drunk driving, right? I mean, these kind of titles. And uh, phenomena, when we are talking about phenomenon, what is the domain? What is the field? right or phenomena that you are investigating so that is the the most important question and why is important to study it so many quality research articles begin with pro provocative data right or news story to pull readers in and the last decade fatal accidents caused by drunk driving are again increasing at an alarming rate of x percent per year so this is the this is one approach, but another approach is to begin an article with a brief description of the focal phenomena in plain non-specialist language. And common reasons given for studying a phenomena are that is historically new, growing in size, changing in nature, critical to a profession or critical to a social cause such as environmental sustainability or public welfare. When we talk about literature review, so basically, what does the literature say about the phenomena or what do we know? A literature review basically introduces the reader to the theoretical conversation about the phenomena thus far till date, right? 
if there is a considerably literature on the phenomena cite the landmark articles that started the theoretical conversation and those that changed the conversation significantly specific especially those that were published in the journal you are targeting so common ways of organizing literature are by chronological order discipline level of analysis methodology or theoretical perspective like it has been mentioned there is a one example many studies address the national and individual factors that promote drunk driving so at a national level study show that how one reviews literature must be directly related to the theoretical problem which is discussed next and a theoretical problem theoretical pro problem what aspects of the phenomena does the literature overlook or what do we not know so this aspect of the article is variously called a gap oversight problem or problematization so that means through which you can find out what is the gap and why we are writing this paper to fulfill this gap otherwise if somebody have done research in past so there is no use again we are doing the same thing and we are reaching to the same conclusion we are reaching to the same same kind of inference so there is no use so but first of all we have to find out gap and after that we are going for further research so here is research questions also right and uh, to leave no room for doubt about the research focus here is author recommend restating the theoretical problem as research questions and while who what when where why and how and sometimes we call it w family and uh, questions are all essential building blocks of any theoretical puzzle so top academic journals really value answers to why and how questions and fortunately qualitative research is especially well suited for developing explanatory why and uh, procedural how models and this does not necessarily mean that your question need to contain the word why or how for example the following is a why question implied by the verb promote so what are the community factors that promote drunk and driving i mean this is the uh, one of the example and then we further we can proceed to research motivation and why is the important to solve the theoretical problem the answer to this question is called the research motivation potential contribution so what and here is opportunity to foreshadow the core theoretical contribution and practical implications so here is understanding the community factors that promote this particular problem and then we come to the theoretical perspective so basically what interpretive lens are you using to examine the theoretical problem and why so some popular lenses or perspectives in contemporary quality research include actor network theory institutional theory social practice theory so that that depends on you which kind of theory you would like to incorporate and that would focus your data analysis and a theoretical perspective also provide you with a vocabulary of for conceptualizing your emergent findings so to justify your selected perspective emphasize similarities between the perspective and research questions then we come to the here is road maps so how is the paper organized so called it is road maps so describe the content of the rest of the paper road maps are usually placed at the end of a short introduction just before the literature review i mean it would be after the introduction and above the just before the literature review or at the end of a long multi component introduction just before the methods for example the next section describe the empirical study the section therefore present the emergent findings the final section discuss the theoretical contributions and practical implications then we come to the next section the next part because this paper is divided into four sections so uh, four and we have already started we had finished next point is next section is the methods and here is again is the organization how we have to organize this particular method section is often the shortest section of an art 
particle unless the methods are unusual for the field, in which case they require more elaboration. Three critical elements of the method section are the research context, data collection, and data analysis. That means it is focused only on these particular three parts. So one by one, let me clear all these three parts. Literature, sorry, research context. What is the context or real world setting of your research? And by the time you start writing your, your article, your research context may seem ordinary to you, but it will almost, almost certainly be unfamiliar to most readers. So according to when describing the context, it may be useful to pretend that you are writing to someone very far away in a very different context. So to justify your selected context, explain how the context embodies the theoretical problems. Like for example, it has very well explained then we come to the data collection. How were the data collected and why? So strength of the qualitative research is it can include various forms of data, including primary and secondary data, textual and visual data, and interviews, observations, surveys, all those things you have to use. So most qualitative research uses theoretical sampling, that is data collection based on theoretical goals. For example, within the communities, you could interview, uh, there is the uh, drunk drivers, traffic police to understand drunk driving from multiple perspective. This is the one of the example of the related research. So Data analysis also, that is the last part of this second uh, section. Here is data analyzed, interpreted, or developed into theory and why. And however, if your theoretical perspective has already been discussed in the front end, you can discuss the more procedural aspects of data analysis. And here procedures such as categorization, abstraction, comparison, dimensionalization, integration, iteration, right? So these kind of things you have to work on it. And the third section, when we come to the, again, most important section, the findings, again, first part of this finding, organization. So finding are the answers of your research questions. They can be organized into any number of subsection, but it is typical to have three to five subsections. If you have multiple research questions, then each subsection could, answer one research questions. If you have a single research questions with multiple answers, then each sections could offer one answer. Then we come to the figures. So qualitative research article often use a figure to illustrate the emergent framework model or theory. So good figure includes a visual representation of all the key concepts, as well as all the key relationships among these concepts, unlike standard box and arrow drawings of causal models in quantitative research. Right, so then we come to the placement macro and micro relationships via up and down placements, right, and uh, then we come to the quotes. So one type of inline quotes is an informant's words or phrase placed within the authored sentence. And here is some journals have word count guidelines for inline quotes versus block quotes, right, that is under uh, under versus over 100 words. So when deciding how much of a text or transcript to quote, here is you have to finalize that is easier to trim unnecessary clauses later on when it is clearer when aspects of the, uh, the ex, uh, excerpts ex, uh, and are most relevant to your theoretical claims. Then we come to the tables, right? I'm sure qualitative research articles, uh, they are uh, present additional data in tables. So here is uh, then, here is theorizing. I'm using the, author is using the term, here is theorizing. Here is denote the writing of the qualitative findings which involves, right? Combining extend emergent observations, claim data elaboration sequence, as well as uh, here is um, author refer to this approach that expectation data confirmation sequence. So in that way, like, uh, like a telling showing telling sequence. 
right so how to make your arguments more per, more persuasive is beyond the scope of this guide so then we come to the the last section of this paper that is back end right from it, this paper has been started from fore end and after that last part is back end so again that there would be the one part is uh, organization where what you are do interpretive summary theoretical contributions practical implications limitations and opportunities and conclusion so primary theoretical contribution means your findings there is could be core contribution or interpretive summary that must be uh, specified in your paper in this particular section and drawing on a multimodal study of demographically similar communities with high and low drug driving rates i mean this is the related to that particular paper so secondary theoretical contribution means here is we talk about implications contributions right and here is by contrast secondary theoretical contribution or implication tend to be more speculative theoretical insights that are applicable to other related uh, literature then we come to the this study right uh, what kind of challenges and uh, ex existing theories all all those things you are going to explain here then we come to the practical implications so write your practical implications with the specific stakeholders in mind for example if your research is about drunk driving write your practical implications or the policy makers limitations and opportunities means here is what kind of limitations you have faced during this research and many limitations stem from the chosen research context data collection or theoretical perspective and here is specify how future research could explore alternative research context and informant samples and theoretical perspective to improve upon your current research and last one is confusion this ultimate section is not always necessary but it gives you an opportunity to leave your readers with what you believe are the key takeaways from your research and uh, finishing uh, touches like front to back integration that's the most important right your your there should be integration right from first part to the last part right there should be uh, connectivity so do the method finding and contribution flow from the research questions do the findings actually incorporate all the types of data you have noted in the methods as well as finally you are doing editing so format your article include the tables figures references journal style sheet whatever is the references are required either in a howard manner or in a apa style or vancouver right shanghai so i mean it depends on you what particular research referencing style you people are opting proper proofreading is most essential copy editing all those services are much faster and more affordable than you might imagine so search online for editing services so n number of the editing services you can find it friendly reviews so send your manuscript to at least 3 to 5 friendly reviewers for feedback not all at once but it is a stage as you keep refining your manuscript so contrary to popular belief friendly reviewers need not be senior scholars in your field in fact phd's classmates junior scholars in your field and non academic friends can all be excellent friendly reviewers so wherever you turn seek diverse stuff and and uh, nitpicky readers as reviewers you can certainly disregard right and uh, here is a, a proper not ring true for you but if to a more friendly reviewers indicate a similar concern than do take their concern seriously so now you are ready to submit your manuscript good luck and these are the references and hardly few references because that is his own creation right the, the that is why there is the less number of the references so this article i like it so that is why i i i i should that should be share with you so you can get the advantage by this article so thank you keep watching and i'm sure this article would be available in my description box thank you so much